Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've been working on this product for a while, and I just didn't want to miss today. So <laughs> thank you for having me. And um, we got something great to announce today. Before we get to it, I've got a few updates uh, for you. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is iBooks. You know, uh, we launched the iBook store less than a year ago. And uh, one of the milestones we've hit is that users have downloaded over 100 million books in less than a year from the iBook store. And today we're announcing uh, that Random House, the largest trade publisher, is bringing their over 17,000 books to the iBook store. They're going to be joining uh, the other five big guys. And uh, we have now over 2,500 publishers uh, distributing through the iBookstore. So we're really thrilled about getting Random House. So that's iBooks. Some good stuff happening there. Now, as you know, iBooks is one of our three stores, right? We have iTunes, the App Store, and iBooks. And they all use the same uh, Apple ID to, uh, to access them. And you have to have an account with Apple. Now, Recently, we just crossed 200 million accounts. And these are accounts with credit cards and one-click purchasing. Now, Amazon doesn't publish their numbers, but it's very likely this is the most accounts with credit cards anywhere on the internet. So we're really, really excited about this, and that's a big milestone for us. Another milestone is let's look at one of these stores, the App Store. We recently just paid out over $2 billion to the developers cumulatively in total. Developers have earned over $2 billion from selling their apps on the App Store. And again, a lot of people have tried to copy this. I think. We're way ahead, and you can understand why developers want to write their apps for the App Store. So we're very excited about that. And lastly, the iPhone. We recently shipped our 100 millionth iPhone. So a lot of stuff going on, and it's all good. Now, today we're here to talk about Apple's third post-PC blockbuster product. Right? That's how we think about these things. We started off uh, in 2001 with the iP iPod, right? our first post-PC product. And uh, we've been at it ever since. In 2007, we added the iPhone. And in 2010, we added the iPad. And every one of these has been a blockbuster. So we're uh, in a position now where the majority of our revenues come from these post-PC products. And when we introduced the iPad a little less than a year ago, we said it's our most advanced technology in a magical and revolutionary device at an unbelievable price. Now, people laughed at us for using the word magical, but you know what? It's turned out to be magical, right? And people weren't sure that it was an unbelievable price. Well, let me tell you, ask our competitors now. <laughs> and they'll tell you. So 2010 turned out to be the year of the iPad. 
And uh, let me give you a few statistics on that. We sold almost 15 million iPads in 2010. And remember, that's just nine months. That's from April through December. 15 million iPads. That's more than every tablet PC ever sold. <laughs> you know, the tablet PC did not invent the modern tablet PC. It crashed and burned. The modern tablet PC is the iPad. And it generated a little shy of $10 billion in revenue for Apple. $9.5 billion in revenue over nine months. We've never had a product that got off to that fast of a start. As a matter of fact, many have said this is the most successful consumer product ever launched. Over 90% market share. And our competitors were just <laughs> flummoxed. They went back to the drawing boards. They tore up their designs because they weren't competitive. And uh, so there was one uh, Samsung got out last year. And uh, you might have heard the quote that they said. As you heard, our sell-in was quite aggressive, around 2 million. In terms of sell-out, we believe it was quite small. <laughs> so a lot of these were probably on the shelf by the end of the year. Now, our app store has over 350,000 apps in it. Over 65,000 of those now take full advantage of the iPad. It's larger screen, it's faster processing, et cetera. And some of these apps are just fantastic. Apps from Autodesk, all sorts of magazines and newspapers and publishing apps. Just wonderful, wonderful apps. Consumption apps, creation apps, fantastic games, and a lot of apps for business in vertical markets like medical. The things people are doing here are amazing. And again, they're taking advantage of this incredible, magical user interface on a much larger canvas with more resources. And the apps that they're writing are just fantastic. There's never been anything, as an example, like this for photography before. 65,000 apps specifically tailored for the iPad. Now, that compares to our competitors who are trying to launch these days with, at most, 100 apps. And, and I think we're being a little generous here. So this is a huge advantage we have, and it's going just like this. Now, one of the things that enabled us to roll out this technology so fast was our Apple retail stores. They were built for moments like this. They were built to take new technology and roll it out and educate customers about it and be there when they have questions and issues. And uh, we have uh, uh, hundreds of Apple stores now. As you know, this is one of our newest ones in Chicago. And without these stores, I don't think we would have been as successful either. So we made a video about 2010 the year of the iPad. And I'd love to show that to you now. So let's roll the video. It's not often that something brand new comes along and creates a new category. That's a very rare moment in time. So it's very easy when something new launches that naysayers come out of the woodwork and all beat it down and say why it's not going to work. And, and it's so gratifying to see that instead it's one of the greatest things we've ever done. No one, no one predicted in their highest estimates it would be as successful as it has been. The iPad, according to some industry experts, is the fastest growing new product in history. You know, in 10 years of retail, I've never seen anything like the launch of the iPad. You know, I just remember that first day, and it wasn't how many we sold, which was an all-time record. It was the number of people that want to put their hands on this product. The number one reason people come to our stores is to try a product that they've heard about, but never experienced firsthand. 
And the iPad is a product that has to be held, has to be touched to truly understand how magical it is. The iPad is not a personal computer. It's beyond that. Some people call it a post-PC device because it can do some of the things the PC did in a far more personal way. The iPad has become a global phenomenon. It's universal in the sense that it appeals to a wide range of people, from small children all the way up to senior citizens. And it's true worldwide. And then on top of that, it's finding new uses in places that we never imagined. The Chicago Public Schools is the third largest school system in the country. It is difficult to keep kids motivated in school and, and keep them engaged in the, the curriculum and materials. What we're seeing with the iPad is that they are engaged. You put the iPad in front of them and you'll see the kids immediately focus right on that content and start working through it. In a short amount of time, we're seeing um, gains as high as 50 to 60% in reading math and science with our classrooms using the iPads. I really believe that this is the future of education. Sometimes doctors are overwhelmed with data. What we've tried to do on the iPad is to give doctors at the point of care the tools they need at the exact moment the doctor can make a difference. What we're finding with the iPad is that doctors are spending more time with patients. In fact, doctors are engaging patients by showing them images, showing them data on the screen. So it's empowered doctors to be more productive, but it's also brought doctors and patients together. So I think what's so exciting about the iPad is it will change the way doctors practice medicine. The power of the iPad is it becomes a window into everything that's important to me in running my business. I've got our corporate communication on here. I have our data management system on here. Our customer relationship management system is on here. It's given us a vision of what is possible, of where our industry can go, how we can be more productive, how we can be more successful. This device is how we are gonna run the future of the enterprise. Developers and customers are taking it further into places we could never have imagined. And we're seeing uses out there that are just heartwarming and so exciting to see because these are, these are uses that change people's lives. Assisting children with autism to communicate is uh, a rather complicated process. The iPad is absolutely part of our clinical practice here. The screen size gives us enough real estate to be able to create materials and applications that are meaningful to them. You know, we're not curing autism, but we're offering a tool that improves the potential of a person with autism. It gives them more opportunities to be better communicators, to be better understanders, to be better learners. The iPad is clearly the next step. It's a game changer. I define a miracle as something that comes in and changes your life for the better that you did not expect, you know, that you never thought could happen. When Leo was first diagnosed with autism, it really knocked me sideways emotionally just to think that things would be difficult for my child. I mean, you never want anything to be difficult for your child. It's hard for Leo to be independent. It's hard for him to self-direct. But with the iPad, you know, it just makes him happy and independent and he didn't have that ability before. This is something that my son can do, you know. He doesn't need me. You know, I don't want him to have to need me all the time. So. We created a device that was going to be indispensable in the things we do every day. And not only do we achieve that, but it's going further, deeper, faster into our lives than we ever imagined. And this is just the beginning. So, we've gotten off to an exceptional first year. And, uh, We'd like to build on that. What about 2011? 
everybody's got a tablet. Is 2011 going to be the year of the copycats? Well, I think if we did nothing, maybe a little bit, probably not so much, because most of these tablets aren't even catching up with the first iPad. But we haven't been resting on our laurels, because in less than a year, we're going to introduce today iPad 2, the second generation iPad. So what is iPad 2? What have we learned? What can we improve? Well, it is an all new design. It is not a tweaked design. It's not got marginal improvements. It's a completely new design. And the first thing is, it's dramatically faster. We have a new chip we call A5. Our chip wizards have come up with this. And it's great. It's dual core processors, right? two processors inside. And so we get up to twice as fast on CPU performance. But we've really gone all out on the graphics performance, up to nine times faster graphics. The graphics on this thing are wonderful. Same low power as A4. We don't want to give up any of that legendary battery life. And even though others are starting to ship, I think this is going to be the first dual core tablet to ship in volume. So A5 is a really a, a quite an achievement and is going to give us something that's up to twice as fast on CPU performance, up to nine times faster on graphics, and the first iPad was no slouch. So a lot faster with A5. Second, we've built in some cameras for video. We've got a rear camera out the back, and we've got a front-facing camera out the front. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We've also built in the gyroscope that we have in the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Now, having built in all of this stuff, one of the most startling things about the iPad 2 is it is dramatically thinner. Not a little bit thinner, a third thinner. 33% thinner. That's what it looks like. So if you look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers, gone from 13.4 millimeters down to 8.8 .8 millimeters thick. It's dramatic. And for those of you that have iPhone 4s, the new iPad 2 is actually thinner than your iPhone 4. So we're incredibly happy with this. And when you get your hands on one, it feels totally different. And all of these other tablets are coming out, most of them even thicker than the original iPad, nothing even approaching this. In addition to thicker, it's lighter as well, going from 1.5 pounds down to 1.3. And you might not think that's a lot, but when you get down to 1.5 pounds, a tenth of a pound is a lot. And uh, it feels quite a bit lighter. And it's got an all new design. It's just beautiful. So this is what it looks like. It's really thin. And it comes in two colors, black and white. We're going to be shipping white from day one. <laughs> so. And to give you some scale, this is what it looks like. Again, you can just pick this thing up. It almost floats. Black and white, black or white here. Now, in addition to having both colors, we also have models that work with both AT&T and Verizon's 3G networking from day one. So we support both AT&T and Verizon. Now, here we are adding stuff into the iPad, uh, cameras and 
faster processors and gyroscopes and all this other stuff. Uh, and we've made it way thinner. Something's got to give. And uh, you would think that we would have to give up some of the iPad's legendary battery life. But our engineering team found a way. And we have the same legendary 10-hour battery life as the original iPad, with all of this extra stuff in it, and yet dramatically thinner. And again, that's over a month of standby. So 10 hours of battery life. Again, a lot of these other guys are coming out with substantially less. And this has been tried and tested by every reviewer. Uh, iPads get 10 hours of battery life. So we're really happy to keep that and uh, never let that go. Now, in addition to preserving the battery life, when we add all this stuff, we've also preserved the price. And so we're going to keep the same exact prices starting at just $4.99, same exact prices as the current iPad, yet with all of these new features, a dramatically improved product. Now, some folks are out there saying, well, they're only a little bit more expensive than us at $7.99. Just when you take a look at this matrix of these six models, five of these six models are less expensive than $7.99. OK, so they've really moved up into the high ground. We only have one model that's more expensive than $7.99. And you add all of this together with over 65,000 apps tuned to the iPad. And we think 2011 is going to be the year of iPad 2. So just a beautiful product. So when are we going to ship it? April, May, June? No. On March 11th, that's a week from this Friday, we are shipping in volume in the US. And two weeks after that, on March 25th, we are shipping in at least 26 more countries including all of our high volume countries, except a few where we're still getting regulatory approvals. So 26 countries or more on March 25th. This thing's going to be everywhere in the month of March. And that is iPad 2. Okay. We've got some really cool accessories. So there's two I'd like to tell you about today. The first one, we've had a lot of requests for HDMI video out. Teachers want to hook iPads up to their flat screen TVs in the classroom so that everybody can see, et cetera, et cetera. We have now an accessory cable that does just that. Right? It get, delivers HDMI mirrored video output. So exactly what you see on the iPad, you see on HDMI. It provides output up to 1080p. Uh, it works with all apps. So anything you can see on the iPad screen, you see on HDMI. It's exactly what people want. It supports rotation. There's no setup or configuration whatsoever. And you can even charge your iPad while you're using it. So if you're giving a presentation, you're running low on batteries, just plug in your transformer and plug it right in. And here's what it looks like. Place to plug in an HDMI cable and a place to plug in your 30-pin connector to pass through the power to charge it, if you so choose. And so here it is on a HDTV. It's really simple. And it works great, and it's just $39. So for people that need that, we've got a great accessory now. Something that's going to be even more popular, though, we call smart covers. For the original iPad, we did a case. 
case is pretty cool. It can prop the iPad up for typing or for watching movies. Worked pretty well, except that we went to all this trouble to make a beautiful design and we covered it up with this case. Right? But more than that, we added thickness and weight to the product and we made it more difficult to use with some of the accessories. So we thought we could do better than this for iPad 2. And we started from the very beginning to design the case right alongside the product. And we have done that, but it's not a case anymore. It's a cover to cover the glass. It's a smart cover. And this is what it looks like. And it bends and folds around just like this as a typing stand and to watch movies on just like the, the old one. Looks great with black, looks great with white. And it even automatically, instantly wakes up the iPad from sleep when you open it and automatically puts the iPad to sleep when you close it. Now, how is this held on? Do we have some screws that you screw in? What, what do we do? No, we use magnets. Our engineering and ID team came up with this idea of using magnets that grasp it and auto-align it. So it's always in perfect alignment. And I'll show you a little video of this. You won't believe it. It's so cool. And you can remove it in a second. You can add it in a second. It adds minimal weight and thickness because it's just covering the top. It's got a microfiber lining that cleans the screen every time you move it, open it or close it. Again, it automatically wakes on open, puts the iPad to sleep when you close it. It's really easy to remove or change the cover. So you can have a bunch of them and pick which cover you feel like today and easily just put it on. And they come in polyurethane, which is used to make spacesuits, uh, or leather. And so I've got a little video that just shows you how this thing works. And let's run that video. One of my favorite little videos, it actually kind of reminds me of a Pixar short or something like that. <laughs> um, but as you see, we actually built magnets right into the iPad itself. And then there's magnets in the hinge for the smart cover. And it not only holds the cover on, but it auto aligns it. It's really cool. And of course, what would these cases be if they didn't come in colors? So we've got five polyurethane colors and five colors of uh, leather. And they're really, really beautiful. They look great with the black unit. They look great with the white unit. The polyurethane cases are $39. The leather cases are $69. And uh, we think this is going to, we think people are going to love these cases. So, those are the two accessories I want to tell you about. Now let's go back into the iP iPad 2 and let's talk about the software that it's running because we have a new release of iOS called iOS 4.3. And to take us through some of the features of that, I'm going to ask my colleague Scott Forrestal uh, to come up and take it through its paces. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Good morning. So along with the new iPad 2, we're releasing the next version of iOS, iOS 4.3. And 4.3 brings with it some great enhancements 
and some new features. Let me walk you through just a few. Starting with significantly increased Safari performance. Now we took the Nitro JavaScript engine for Mac OS X and moved it on top of iOS. And now with this engine, iOS runs JavaScript more than twice as fast as before. This is fantastic. Next, iTunes home sharing. iTunes home sharing lets you get at all of your music, your movies, your TV shows that are stored in iTunes on your computer directly from your iOS device. You just wirelessly stream over your home Wi-Fi network right from your computer to your iPad, to your iPhone, and to your iPod Touch. So iTunes home sharing. Next, we have some really nice AirPlay improvements. You know, it was only a few months ago that we released AirPlay. And it is absolutely the best way to get your photos, your music, your movies, and TV shows from your iOS device up to your television using Apple TV. Let's say you're watching a movie. This new icon appears, which is the AirPlay icon. When you tap on it, iOS automatically looks around your network and finds your Apple TV. There's no configuration needed. And when you choose Apple TV, you're now streaming your movie right to your television set. It's that easy. Well, we're making AirPlay even better in iOS 4.3. If you're sharing photos, you can now use all of the really cool built-in slideshow transitions from Apple TV right on your iPad or any iOS device. And also, now, in iOS 4.3, apps from the App Store and even websites can now AirPlay video in addition to audio. So some really nice AirPlay improvements. Now this next one was a very popular request from our customers. Some customers have said they want, uh, and this has to do with the iPad slider switch on the sort of the top right of the iPad. Some customers have said they want to use that switch to really quickly mute their iPad, which is great, and that's the way we ship today. Other customers have said they want a really fast way to lock the orientation, right? to lock the rotation of the iPad. Let's say you're sitting on the couch and reading a book in iBooks. And you might lie down on your side, and they don't want it to rotate into landscape. And so they want a really fast hardware switch to do that. So in iOS 4.3, we're enabling users the preference so they can choose to assign whichever of those two functions they prefer to that slider switch. Next is personal hotspot. Now this is a feature for our iPhone 4 customers. Personal hotspot lets you share your iPhone's 3G internet connection over Wi-Fi to other devices. So now getting on the internet from, say, your laptop is as simple as using Wi-Fi to connect to that Wi-Fi personal hotspot from your phone. Next, as you saw, iPad 2 comes with these new cameras on both the back and the front. And to go along with these new cameras, we've built in some new software, starting with Photo Booth. Now, those of you who have used Photo Booth on the Mac know how incredibly fun it is. And you're going to love it on the iPad. You know, let me just go ahead and give you a demo. So here I have an iPad 2 which is mirrored up there. And let me go ahead and launch Photo Booth. So the first thing you'll see here is that iPad 2 is so fast with the A5 chip that we're looking at nine live video streams at once. And we can do this, and we have plenty of CPU and GPU to spare. Uh, let me go ahead and choose one. I'll choose Mirror. Uh, let's see if I can line this up right. Like this, and you can you know, grab your head and pull it away. Uh, <laughs> you, you can take a picture of yourself doing it. So let me see if I can do that. So here I am. And there I took two. Uh, and then you can share that with your friends. Let me go back, and here's thermal. Uh, so you can see what the predator would, how they would see me. Uh, 
And let me do one more. Let's say you're in a Picasso kind of mood or some really bad uh, surgery. So you can also take a finger and move the effect around yourself. So I can go there. There. <laughs> Lovely. That's what I used when I met my wife. Right? Uh, so you can see that Photo Booth is incredibly fun uh, on, on the iPad 2. And I know that my kids have spent countless hours playing with it on, on the Mac, and I know they're going to absolutely love it on the iPad. That's Photo Booth. Next is FaceTime. FaceTime is the best and easiest way to video conference. We support it on the iPhone, and we support it on the iPod Touch, and now we're bringing it to the iPad. You can FaceTime between two iPads, between an iPad and an iPhone or an iPod Touch, and between an iPad and a Mac. Let me go ahead and just give you a demo. All right. Let me launch FaceTime here. You can see I have my buddy list on the right, so I'll go right. So I'll go ahead and choose Michael. So it's calling uh, him, and in a second he'll answer. Hey, How you doing? Doing great, Scott. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. I was just giving everyone here a demo of FaceTime. You can see already that the size of the iPad is just ideal for video conferencing. I mean, the person's face is a great size. You can see all their expressions. It feels very personal. Uh, you can also use both the front camera and the rear camera. So, Michael, why don't you flip to the rear camera and show us what you're looking at? Sure thing, Scott. Okay, Michael's been locked in a, a very sad cafe. Uh, <laughs> I'm Free so sorry. Phone, <laughs> now, you can imagine, you know, if, if Michael had children or something, this would be fun to look at. <laughs> Thank God. I, I told him. I told him to bring a, a box of puppies, but I guess he didn't. Uh, anyway, you can also move the, the pip around to get it out of the way. So it's sort of pong. You can move it wherever you want. Uh, and, but FaceTime on this really is a great experience. And we can't wait for people to get their hands on it. And of course, from day one, you can FaceTime from your iPad 2 with all the iPhone 4 customers out there. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks, Scott. And that's FaceTime. So these are just a few of the great enhancements and features that we're bringing out in iOS 4.3. iOS 4.3 will be a free download on March 11th. It supports all iPads. It supports GSM iPhone 4s and iPhone 3GS and third and fourth generation iPod Touch. And that is iOS 4.3. Thanks. That's great. Thanks, Scott. Now, in addition to these two new apps being built right into iOS 4.3, we've got two more apps we're introducing here today. And we like to do applications. We like to do applications because it gives us feedback you know, for what it's like to be an app developer so we can make the system better and better and better for all developers. But also, it can set the bar. It gives third-party developers something to say, wow, if Apple can do that, I can certainly do better. And so it, it sets the bar pretty high for developers out there. And uh, so there's two apps we're introducing today. And the first one is iMovie for iPad. Uh, and we have a long history of video editing. Uh, we, we're the largest supplier of video editing software in the world, we think. And uh, iMovie for iPad is in that tradition. It's got a precision editor on it, multi-track audio recording. This is not a toy. You can really edit movies on this thing. It's got new themes. You can airplay your video right to Apple TV from the application. You can share your videos in HD with some really popular sites. And it's a universal app, so it will also run on the iPhone. And to demo this, I'd like to ask Randy Ubelos, who's our chief architect for video applications, 
to come give us one of his great demos. Randy? Thanks. Thanks, Steve. So last summer, we brought iMovie to iOS, and it was a big hit with our customers. Today, we've got a new version that really takes advantage of the big screen of the iPad and the extra uh, horsepower that it has. I'd like to show it to you. When we start up the app, you can see our really nice new home screen with the old time theater, really gorgeous display here. You can see each of your projects has its own little poster. There's a thumbnail of the movie and the poster is based on the theme that's in the project. You can just scroll back and forth between these. Works great in portrait. It also works really nicely in landscape. And this looks really great on the retina display of the iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch as well. We can scroll back here. I'm just gonna tap on this one project and we can edit. You can see we've got the nice editing interface here. I've got my timeline down below. It's fully multi-touch so I can zoom in and out. I've got my nice video bin. I can see all my videos and a nice big viewer for looking at my video. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of editing. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Now I can actually use, there's a camera button on the right that I can use to, to use the camera of the iPad 2 to record directly in the timeline or I can go for my video bin. Now I can just press and hold on a clip and I can skim my finger back and forth to take a look at the video before it's been placed into the timeline or I can just tap on a clip and then I get two handles. So I can actually choose the segment of the video that I want to put in. And we have two different clips here. I'll put in a piece of that one. Select the second clip. We have another shot of that, the girl going in the water. So we'll pick kind of a corresponding position there. Tap that, drops into the timeline. And we've got a cross dissolve between. If we want to do a more precise edit, for the iPad 2, we have a precision editor. So I can do a reverse pinch apart bring up the precision editor, and now I can see all the content of the clip on the left before and after the edit, and all the content for the clip on the right. I also have full control over the transition. I can double tap, and we can set that to none, so that'll make a cut. I can press and hold on the top dot, and that allows me to choose the point within that video where we want to end. So we'll pick a spot kind of where she goes out over the water. Now I can press and hold on the lower dot and do the same thing. So we can make this kind of look like just a cut in the same shot. I can press and hold on the center dot as well, and I can roll the edit. I can add and subtract frames from both sides simultaneously. When I want to take a look, we just back up a little bit and hit play. Really easy to, to keep going and adjust your edits to get things just the way that you want. And with a pinch, we close it up. Now, one of the big feature requests we had from users was audio. We've done a lot of work in that area. I have a nice audio button here that I can press, and I see audio waveforms for all of my clips. These clips have all, uh, several of these clips have been muted, which you can see from the audio that's dimmed out. If I want to turn the audio on a clip, I just double tap, brings up my clip settings. I can turn the audio on. I can also turn the volume up, and you'll actually see the waveform get larger. It actually shows me the change in the volume level that I've done. This next clip down here, we've got this guy going off on a zip line. It'd be great to add a sound effect there. I'm going to switch over to my audio bin, and we have sound effects here. There are over 50 sound effects that come with iMovie for use in your movies. Let's zoom down here, we've got this great jet flyby. Go ahead and add that. And when it adds, using the audio waveforms, I can see the audio waveforms not quite lined up with that clip. I'm just gonna press and hold my finger on top of that audio and just drag it back, line it right up on the clip. Now I know it's right in place. Let's take a look. I'm like excited, I'm nervous because I'm afraid of height. Really easy. We've got three audio tracks in addition to the background audio track for use for sound effects, and we have a voiceover recording system that allows me to record a voiceover right on top of my movie. Now, we've been looking at one of our new themes. We have three new themes that gives us a total of eight. This one's called Simple, and as you might imagine, it's simple. It's got plain white te text uh, and just fade through black transitions. Looks really nice. We also now have uh, titles over stills. Speaking of stills, we also do face detection on stills. So when you pl one, place one in your timeline, the Ken Burns effect is automatically set up so all the faces stay in frame. Scroll back to the beginning here, and I'm gonna bring up my project settings, and we'll switch to one of my other new themes called Neon. It's a really bold theme. We've got this fade out to black as well. When I tap away, you can see the really nice bold opening title that we have. We also have a great 
uh, theme transition, really nice lower thirds. The music automatically switched when I switched themes, which is the, the default, but I can mix and match. So I can go back to my audio bin, I can choose a song from my iTunes library, or I can choose one of the other eight theme songs for the other themes. We'll go ahead and choose modern, drop that into the background. And easy as that to change the music. Now once I've put the project together and I want to look at it, I can come back out to the marquee. You'll notice that the poster frame has changed to reflect the neon theme that we switched to. I can use the share button down below. If I tap on that, you can see a bunch of our new sharing options. YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, CNN, iReport, direct sharing from within iMovie, and those are all done in high quality HD. I can also use the play button to play directly to AirPlay, or I can play on the device. Let's t take a look. And that is the new version of iMovie on the iPad 2. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. It's awesome. 1.3 pounds. It's, it blows my mind, this stuff. Precision editing. Sending HD video around to all these sites with one tap. Just a lot of great features in an app that we're going to price at just $4.99. And it's going to be on the App Store on March 11th. So that's iMovie. <laughs> Next up is something I think you're also going to really like, which is GarageBand yeah. for iPad. GarageBand for iPad is remarkable. It's got touch instruments. You can plug in a guitar and play real instruments if you want, but it's got touch instruments that I think are going to be a huge hit with our users. Guitar amps and effects, 8-track recording and mixing, over 250 loops you can add to your songs. Uh, you can email files around of your song to anybody, and it's compatible with the Mac version. So if you want to start something on your iPad and finish it on the Mac, no problem. So to give us a demo of GarageBand on iPad, I'd like to invite Xander Soren, who's our director of music marketing, to do that right now. Xander, all yours. Good morning. It's thrilled to be able to show you GarageBand running on an iPad. This is really cool. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up our new iPad 2 here. And I'll launch GarageBand. And the first thing you see is an instrument browser. So these are all the touch instruments Steve just mentioned. And you can just swipe to tap through them. And it's incredible. They turn the iPad itself into a musical instrument that you can play wherever you go. And I'll go ahead and bring up a, a keyboard to, to start showing this off. And you can see this beautiful grand piano comes up and it fills the display. And the keyboard's not just a grand piano. I can tap on that icon right in the middle there. And you can see all the sounds that are built in. There are organs, electric piano, clavinet. Look at this, a whole bunch of great synthesizers that are really, really fun to play. But let's stick with that piano for now. And the GarageBand piano shares a lot of the qualities of a real grand piano. Of course, we see a bunch of black and white keys, and we can just tap right on the iPad's display to play them. Right, but a real piano also has a sustain pedal. And without a sustain pedal, when you tap on a note or play a note, and then let go, it stops sounding. So we have this button here that we can tap and hold whenever we need sustain, or we can even slide and lock that into position. And now, sustain is just on and ringing all the time, which is cool. Now, another important quality of a real piano is that you can play a piano with dynamics. So what does that mean? It means that a note sounds different when you tap it soft or when you strike it really hard. And the GarageBand keyboard does that too. So look at this. I'll go ahead and play a passage fairly soft. Wow, 
what, or I can strike it hard. And you can hear the difference. So how do we do that? Well, iPad has an accelerometer built in, and we use that to measure the force that my finger strikes the display. So GarageBand knows if I tap something really soft or really hard. And we use that throughout the app, and that lets, lets us create these instruments that are incredibly expressive and, and fun to play. Now, we're only seeing some of the keys available to us because this is just a window into a much larger, full-range piano. And we can move up and down the registers of that piano with these octave switches on the left side of the screen. So if I tap it down a couple times to minus two, there's how we play a lower note. And I can show this off by playing the same three notes and we'll tap up through the octaves. Right? So no problem accessing all the notes on this piano. Now, as I mentioned before, it's not just a piano. Some great sounds here, and let's bring up the classic rock organ. First thing you'll see is that the look and the personality and the controls completely change to match a real B3 organ. And I can just go ahead and play that. Right? And then you would expect the controls that you would have on a real organ. Things like these draw bars that affect the tone. So as I play a chord, I can move these. And see that rotating speaker at the top? I can even speed up the speaker. All right? Just incredibly realistic. And we built all those controls into the instruments because they're important. So we'll check out one more sound here on the keyboard. And we'll go to our synthesizers. And let's bring up uh, 50 Sci-Fi. Now this will show something that you can do on the GarageBand virtual keyboard that you can't even play on a real physical keyboard. So we're really taking advantage of the unique things you can do with software here. Now this one is set up in a way that when I tap a key and I slide my finger up and down the rest of the keys, it's going to glide between the notes. It won't play the individual notes. And we've added a blue dot that's going to follow my finger so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I can tap a note and slide the note up. All right, you play stuff like that. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So as I slide my finger up that key, you probably notice that we can introduce additional expression, like vibrato. And this will explain why this synth is called 50 Sci-Fi. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> so super fun, uh, really realistic, and a lot of things we can, we can do in software that you can't do in the real world. And if I go back to the touch instrument browser, just to remind you, all that is just one instrument. That was the keyboard. And we have all these touch instruments built in. We won't have time to show them all, but let's take a look at a couple more. How about some drums? So GarageBand will put you behind the seat of a virtual drum kit, and you can just bash away on your iPad. Right? And just like the keyboards, it knows if I tap soft or hard. Right? And there's different parts of the drum, plays different sounds which is cool, and then I can even tap the edge of the ride cymbal to show that the position, as I move closer to the bell, you get a different sound, and I'll alternate between the two. Right, or the left and right side of the hi-hat to play open and close patterns. So really, really fun, and if you want, you can just run your finger in a circle and make a lot of noise. <laughs> Another great feature of these drums is that your kids can play them. With, head <laughs> with headphones on. <laughs> so guitar amp. This is great. Guitarists are going to love this. You can plug right into your iPad and play through classic amps and stomp box effects. They look and sound just like the originals. But you know, there are a lot more people out there who don't play guitar or don't play any instrument at all. And we really wanted GarageBand for iPad to be fun for everyone. So we designed a special kind of touch instrument that we call smart instruments. Now, these smart instruments are designed for you to be able to have fun, be musical, even if you've never played a note in your life. And we have smart guitars, smart keyboards, smart bass, smart drums. But let's bring up the smart guitar and show you what it does. So here you can see an acoustic guitar, but one that everybody can play. We have some chords along the middle there. And we've pre-picked all those chords. And we know that they work together. So we do that for you. You don't need to know anything about music. You just Take your finger, pick a chord, and then just strum your iPad. Right? They all sound good together. Right? Campfires will never be the same. 
And we can go and even play individual, we can tap individual notes and do finger picking. Right, so super fun. And here's a little trick I like to show is that you can lay your hand across all the strings and that dampens the guitar strings. So just the realism and expression in these instruments are so much fun, yet incredibly easy to play. Now, if we want it to be even a little bit easier and have GarageBand do the finger picking or the strumming for me, a lot of these smart instruments have this autoplay dial. And I can just go ahead and dial up a pattern. The strings fade away. Now I have these big bars, so the only decision I make is which chord do I want to play. And look what happens with one touch of a finger when I tap on one of these chords. Just choose any chord. Isn't that cool? I just tap again, and it's that simple to play parts. So in, in a lot of ways, these smart instruments, they're kind of like musical training wheels. They make it so you really can't play a bad note. Now, the next thing is recording. Let's say we, we have an idea and we want to capture it so we can hear it later. Recording in GarageBand for iPad is incredibly simple. You can see right at the top of the screen that bright red button, that's in every touch instrument. So all we have to do is tap on it. We'll get a count in. I'll just play the part again. All right, you can see that now in the music timeline up here, we can see the area in green that shows me where my recording has gone. And I can go ahead and play it back. It sounds just like I played it. So you can tell, really easy to do a recording. But you know, once you've laid down one recording, that's actually the first step to writing a song. And to write a song, you need more than one track because you're going to be combining different instruments together. And that's where the tracks view comes in. So right above the ruler, we have this little tracks button. And when I tap on it, the instrument rotates out of the way. And that brings up the canvas. And this is where I work on my song and the arrangement. So the controls at the top never change. Those are exactly the same. I don't have to relearn anything. I can just rewind, show you that that part is still there. The difference is that I see this region. And I can just tap on that region. I can do things like trim it come up with the exact length I want. And this is incredible because I'm touching right on the building blocks of my song and building the song as I go along. So GarageBand for iPad supports up to eight tracks. And let's put that into perspective for a second. Back when the Beatles recorded Sgt. Pepper, the most advanced technology of the day was a four-track tape recorder. And it weighed 300 pounds and was the size of a washing machine. So now today, people are going to have super fun with up to eight tracks on an iPad that's just this light and thin. It's really, really just incredible. Let's go up and bring up a demo song. I'll tap on my songs. And we want to show you what this looks like when you have a bunch of tracks in place and the screen is kind of filled in. And this one uses a whole bunch of our touch instruments. We've got drums and bass and keyboards, a couple guitar amps. And uh, you know, I can swipe back and forth to just scroll through my song. If I want to see the entire song at a glance, I just pinch to zoom out. And there it is. If I want to see any details, I just pinch to zoom in and get you know, as close as I want. Or I can, of course, go ahead and rewind and hit play. And here's something really cool. I can swipe over the track icons and look what happens. I get a mixing board. So now I can go in and fine tune the levels of my track and everything just right. I can solo a track. There's one of our smart guitars strumming along with the track. And it's a little quiet, so let's Bring up the volume so you can hear it. The smart guitar, back it off. Bring the rest of the instruments back. Really cool. OK, so when you make any changes like that, if I ever go back and I tap on my songs, it's going to auto-save for me, make sure that all the changes are, are saved. And now I have a couple options to share that song with my friends. I can tap on Export. And it's going to render an AAC file of the song to make it sound great and be really easy to share. I can email it right from within GarageBand. Just type a little note and tell my friends to check out my new mix. Or I can send it to my iTunes library. So the next time I connect my iPad to my Mac or my PC, I can move it right over and add it to my iTunes library. So that's just a quick look at GarageBand for iPad. It turns your iPad into a complete recording studio and a collection of these incredible touch instruments. And we just can't wait to hear all the creative things that people are going to do once they get this in their hands. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.
I'm blown away with this stuff. You know, playing your own instruments or using the smart instruments, anyone can make music now in something that's this thick and weighs 1.3 pounds. It's unbelievable. So, GarageBand for iPad. Great set of features. Again, this is no toy. This is something that you can really use for real work. This is something that I cannot tell you how many hours teenagers are going to spend making music with this and teaching themselves about music with this. GarageBand for iPad, $4.99. It will be on the App Store on March 11th. So, iPad 2, an amazing product, faster, lighter, thinner, cameras and gyro, iOS 4.3 with built-in FaceTime and photo booth, iMovie and GarageBand for $4.99 each on the App Store, over 65,000 apps that have been tuned for the iPad to take advantage of all its resources. 3G on AT&T and Verizon from day one. The same 10-hour battery life, the same prices starting at $4.99. Black and white, smart covers. We think 2011 is clearly going to be the year of iPad 2. Now, we made a video that I'd love to show you, and so let's go ahead and roll the video. With iPad 2, We've made advances in both form and function that are so significant and far-reaching. I can't think of a product that has defined an entire category and has then been completely redesigned in such a short period of time. It's amazing to think that just a year ago, very few people had actually held an iPad in their hands. And now, with iPad in the hands of millions of consumers, it truly has become a blockbuster post-PC device iPad 2 really builds on the success of the original iPad. It's a third thinner and up to 15% lighter. It has an all-new dual-core A5 chip, which is up to twice as fast with up to nine times the graphics performance. We built in a front-facing camera for FaceTime and photo booth and a rear-facing camera that shoots HD video. And we've been able to do all of this while still maintaining up to 10 hours of battery life. The iPad 2 really is defined by the display. There are just no distractions. By reducing what were essentially three surfaces to two, we got rid of the structural wall around the perimeter of the product and eliminated the edge. It's not only more comfortable to hold, but with the breakthroughs we've made with unibody engineering, it's rigid, sturdy, and even more precise. While the back of the product is made of durable aluminium, we wanted to figure out a way to protect the display without compromising the iPad's size and weight. So rather than developing a separate case, we created a cover at the same time that we were actually designing the iPad. The two are made to work together. It attaches magnetically, it aligns perfectly, and it's just as easy to remove. When the iPad detects you've opened the cover, it immediately wakes from sleep. And when you close the cover, it puts it back to sleep. You can also fold the cover to create a stand for typing or watching a video. And the microfiber internal lining was even designed to help keep the display clean. There are 10 colors, five in polyurethane and five in a beautiful aniline dyed leather. We're constantly working to refine and improve, to simplify, to make something thinner and lighter, and yet at the same time, increasing its functionality. With an all-new front-facing camera, we brought FaceTime to the iPad. It's everything you love about video calling on the iPhone 4, but better. The big iPad display 
really changes the FaceTime experience. At this size, everything is so much clearer and more expressive. There's a rear-facing HD video camera, so you can share the moments you're seeing as they're happening. But FaceTime is just the beginning. We optimize the iOS to take advantage of the A5 dual core chip. And we're introducing new apps that really leverage all this processing power, like PhotoBoot. It's so simple to use, and it's just ridiculously fun. With the new rear-facing HD video camera, iMovie is just a natural on the iPad. The display is so big that there's plenty of room to edit your video. And when you're done, your movies look awesome on the big, beautiful display. GarageBand is an absolute blast. You can use your own instruments, or you can just use the touch instruments that are built in. And those are integrated so well into the iPad that as you tap harder, it plays louder. It just reacts to what you're doing. When you're playing guitar, you can bend the strings. It's just amazing. You don't have to be a musician to use it. Just open it up, start tapping away, you're making music. Recently, we added new ways to share the content on your iPad. With AirPlay, you can share movies, photos, and music right to your Apple TV. And now we're adding video mirroring. Just connect your iPad to your HD TV, and it'll mirror exactly what you're doing on your iPad in any orientation and in full 1080p. We've done things with this iPad that we never could have done before. And it's because there's a lot of new innovation driving it. It starts with the new dual core A5 chip. That's added a lot more speed to things you do every day, like surfing the web, sending email, and multitasking. In fact, it's up to twice as fast. But the place we've made the biggest jump is with graphics, with performance that's up to nine times faster. You'll really notice this in games and apps that use a lot of video. And for the first time, we built a gyro into this iPad. That gives you very precise control in multiple dimensions, and it allows us to really measure the orientation of the iPad in space. These new components and features add all kinds of possibilities when it comes to apps. And even though we've boosted the performance, we haven't compromised on battery life. The new iPad still gets a full 10 hours, and that's a major achievement in a design this thick. With all that we've added to iPad 2, the thinner, lighter design, the amazing dual-core A5 chip, front and rear cameras, and the smart cover, this really is a giant leap forward. The original iPad defined a category, and I think that the iPad 2 will really define that category for years to come. So, I've said this before, I thought it was worth repeating. It's in Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. That it's technology married with liberal arts, married with the humanities, that yields us the result that makes our hearts sing. And nowhere is that more true than in these post-PC devices. And a lot of folks in this tablet market are rushing in, and they're looking at this as the next PC. The hardware and the software are done by different companies, and they're talking about speeds and feeds, just like they did with PCs. And our experience in every bone in our body says that that is not the right approach to this that these are post-PC devices that need to be even easier to use than a PC, that need to be even more intuitive than a PC, and where the software and the hardware and the applications need to intertwine in an even more seamless way than they do on a PC. And we think we're on the right track with this. We think we have the right architecture, not just in silicon, but in the organization to build these kinds of products. And so I think 
we stand a pretty good chance of being pretty competitive in this market. And I hope that what you've seen today gives you a good feel for that. Now, I'd like to take just a minute at the end. I'd like to ask all the people uh, that worked on iPad 2, from engineering to ops to marketing to finance from Apple, if you guys could just stand up so we could give you a round of applause. And as always, uh, I'd also like to thank everyone's families, because they support us and let us do what we love to do. So thank you very much to our extended families out there who make it possible uh, for us to work our tails off making these great products for you. So thanks for coming this morning. We've, uh, we've got a great hands-on area, and I'd really encourage you, go get your hands on one of these things. You won't believe it. Thank you very much.